Georgia Bulldogs tonight, a team that's won two in a row, including knocking off Kentucky last Saturday. There is Brandon Miller, the SEC's leading scorer and perhaps the most talented player, not only in the Southeastern Conference, but maybe the country right now. He has just been incredible in his first run as an Alabama Crimson Tide member. So the Crimson Tide to start things off with the three, and it's money from Mark Sears, who's shooting 38% from behind the arc. Just a simple little screen to screener. He comes off that second screen, not up on him, gets his feet set. Nothing but net. Georgia held on to beat LSU in their midweek game. This man right here with a big shot late provide the margin of victory. Here's Bridges, who's played well the last three games, and he starts this one off nicely with the left hand. Points in the paint, points in the paint, points in the paint for Georgia. That's a recipe today. The Alabama starting five, Bradley, Sears, Bediaco, Clowney, and Miller. Bediaco playing on a tweaked knee. They call it an MCL sprain. Played a little bit against Tennessee. Wasn't the same Coach Oates said. He just didn't have the jump that he normally has, was going to run him out here early and see how he feels, how he looks, to determine what the prognosis will be for his minutes tonight. Georgia, I'm talking to Coach White, said it was very important today that they be able to get different defenses set. We've already seen a little man. We've seen a little zone. They came back right there with a half-court zone trap. They gave up a three to Miller in the corner. The SEC's leading three-point shooter, Brandon Miller, knocks home his 80th make of the year. Cario Oquindo, tough drive, tapped around. Miller there to rip it away. Sears knocked out of bounds by Hill. Hill's been starting lately for Georgia at the point the last few games. That is because their normal starter, Terry Roberts, the transfer from Bradley, Missed a game because of concussion protocol, and in his absence, Justin Hill has been going crazy, so they leave him in the starting lineup, bring Roberts off the bench. Tough, hard-nosed player Hill is. Gives him a little bit of everything. Great leadership. Miller. Uh-oh. Back-to-back threes. That one, a little degree of difficulty. Wow. I don't care what kind of defense you got. You don't make shots like that. There is no defense for it. He made Moncrief. Took it right to the big fella, Bediaco, who rejects it. It'll be Georgia basketball. So now Roberts on the floor with Justin Hill. So you've got two combo guards on the floor now for Georgia. I think that's a help maybe to alleviate some of the pressure defensively. Hopefully they can both create when plays break down, make things happen when the play doesn't work. Roberts, Georgia's leading score at 14 and a half a game with the basketball now. Being defended by Jaden Bradley. Roberts' first shot of the game is perfect. Shot maker, Dave. Downhill, right, left, pull up, step back. He can get it going. Alabama three out of three to start this game from behind the arc. Can they make it four in a row? Almost a four-point play opportunity. That ball went down so far, he should get at least a point and a half. I cannot believe that ball didn't go in. I mean, you don't, you cannot get closer to a make than this. And again, if Georgia's going to have a chance Ooh. in this game, you see how comfortable he is on two of his three threes attempted. He has had feet set, lined it up all the time in the world. That's not a good recipe. They've got to crowd him, make him uncomfortable. They don't have a lot of length to challenge him, so they got to get up in it. Coming off 15 points and 10 rebounds, the reigning SEC freshman of the week. That's the sixth time he has been awarded that this year. <laughs> Boy, he was fun to talk to this morning, wasn't he? I mean, just, I mean, he, he comes across as good a person as he is a basketball player, and he's pretty good basketball player very humble young man here's Hill kicks it back out Juice Holt inside and that one is taken away by the Crimson Tide Miller 
Working on Moncrief. Kick it out to Bradley. To the corner it goes. Clowney can't get it to go, but Benayako keeps it alive for Sears. Perfect. Just one of the best rebounding teams in the country. You give them second chance opportunities, they usually make it happen. Lead the country with 44 plus rebounds per game due to the Crimson Tide. Georgia answers right back. Problem is, they're getting twos. You can't trade two for threes all night. No. I like this zone from Georgia. It, 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 feels, it, it looks like they can keep them in front a little bit better, but again, the ball movement and these kind of shots are coming. Oh, my goodness. Five out of six. They're going to lead them a little bit further than that last team. Man, you, you know your ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, go out on a limb, right? Uh, Here's Hill. Hangs in the air. Boy, he's so strong. It's going to be interesting to see because, and also the shoot around this morning, with the lack of three-point shooting that Georgia has, the lane is going to be crowded. They're going to crowd the lane because they don't have a stretch four, or stretch three out there. So it's going to be interesting to see how much of that Hill drive into the lane that Georgia can get. 6'9", 200-pound Brandon Miller takes it in the lane. Roberts tries to answer back a little bit short. Betty Ako with the rebound. They give it to Miller. Off to Sears. Kick it to Clowney. Baseline jam. They, they get the ball off a miss up the floor as good as any college team I've ever seen. I mean, they, on a missed shot, they get it to the other end. Incredible. There's Juice Holt, the former Crimson Tide player, now with Georgia. Gets it inside. They'll kick it back out to Juice. Hill, little ball fake, step back, boy. Miller at 6'9", just too long. Too long. Miller for three. Nobody there to rebound, and Betty Ako takes it. Up and under, reverse layup is good. I mean, what do you do? I mean, you're racing back, you're trying to get back, and they're coming at you in waves with length, with shooters. Alabama has scored on 10 of their 11 possessions. Good screen up top by Anselm. Rolls to the basket. Roberts feeds him. Knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to the Crimson Tide. Well, regardless of this start here, Mike White has turned the Georgia program around. Remember, a team that just won six games a year ago, 16 of them this year. Had a great run at Florida, just didn't work out down in Gainesville. Always tough to replace a legend like Billy Donovan, but can't overlook his work in Gainesville. And all got started for him as a head coach at Louisiana Tech, where he had certainly great success there. He knows what it looks like. He knows how to put it together. It'll happen. He's a heck of a coach. Here, Sears to the logo off the back of the rim. It'll belong to Alabama. Even then, they had good box out inside position, but again, if the ball comes off a little long, the length of Alabama, it's just a problem. I don't care how good you block them out. If it comes off high and long, Alabama's going to get it. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. Miller wow. will head to the free throw line. He is up to 13 points. And we have played just a tick over six minutes. And you can see you have to make him use that screen. If you let him reject that screen and have a direct line drive and get into the lane with his size, it's over. And again, you have to stay disciplined. They're going to make some shots. They're going to do some things. They're probably the best team in the country. You got to live with those. You can't. You can't give up shots at the lane, and you got to try somehow, some way, find a way to let limit these second chance opportunities. Loose ball. Miller is there, boy. He seems to. The ball finds him, or he finds the ball. Either way, it works. Lost the handle. It'll stay with the tie. 22 on the shot clock. 
How do you guard him, Dave? Do you put a small on him? Do you put a big on him? I mean, just a matchup nightmare. Georgia trying Juice Holt on him right now. They'll switch it. Do Raheem out there defending Miller. Sears left wide open. Good ball fake. Another three on the way. Oh. His stroke is solid. A dozen for the transfer out of Ohio. Well, everybody talks about his strength, but talking to Coach Oates this morning, he said, shot 42% at Ohio. We, we need a shooter. When you first look at him, you, you sit there and go, man, what a strong physical guard he is. But this is why they brought him here, because of this stroke right here. Just good feel for the game. Gets the feet set. You know, it's interesting because these transfers, you, you sometimes you get like a mid-major guy, and you don't know how it's going to translate into a Power 5 type program playing these type of conference games twice a week. But he felt like if you can shoot 42% at Division One basketball, you can shoot. It doesn't matter where you are. And that's what he felt about Sears, why he, didn't, why he had confidence in him. And the shots you're going to get with this group, they're going to be great shots because of the the space that has to be covered from end to end and in the half court they can spread you out you got shooters everywhere and the ball movement is is really good they're going to find you you're going to get good looks you're a good shooter you're going to knock them down bridges that george is going to have to hit those free throws they're already <laughs> down 21 with 13 05 to play pringle Tried to rip it away from Bridges, didn't work. Good job by Bridges, just staying in front, chesting him up, getting the rebound. Hill to Bridges, he won't take that perimeter shot. There's Bridges inside, though, swarmed by some white jerseys. There are five white jerseys around the one black jersey in Braylon Bridges. And you have really two shooters yet. I mean, you have Mar Raheem and McBride, who are really good shooters on the perimeter. And you can see it. I mean, we, we was talked about in the shoot-around. They're going to crowd the ball and try to drive them into Bridges, man. If Bridges is out on the perimeter, they're going to lay off him and get back in the lane. Well, here's our college basketball doubleheader for Wednesday night right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Vandy is in Baton Rouge squaring off against LSU at 7. And Joe Lenardi has Auburn as an 8 seed. They'll host Ole Miss at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Ali, oh, works perfectly. Well, we hadn't seen that yet, but it was a matter of time. That middle pick and roll, they've been getting it deep every time. And a foul against the tie. Well, Pringle, he can get up high. Throw in his 6'10 frame, makes it look easy. Yeah, and I mean, I think before the day is done, you're going to have to see a strong hedge, a trap or something. If they let that guard start going downhill and they've got shooters in both corners, you're going to have to make a decision. Do I roll to help off a shooter in the corner and take away the lob? I think you got to do something at the, at the initiation of the ball screen to keep it from getting that deep. I don't think you can guard it. I don't think Georgia can guard it if the ball gets that deep. Georgia's missed six straight shots. Haven't had a field goal go through the cylinder in three and a half minutes. Meanwhile, Alabama's hit 11 of 15 shots. Make it 12 out of 16. You, you see, Dave, how deep he's getting? I mean, you just got to do something. To me, at, at the initial, you're playing drop coverage, and I get it. But he's getting in there so deep, and again, you got shooters on the perimeter. What are you going to do? Georgia answers back. Bridges up to six points. Quinterly. Javon averaging just seven points a game this year for Alabama. Going to count the basket for Nick Pringle. His minutes have been very... Maybe he wouldn't necessarily have him on his roster, but had to get him on here for this season. No, I agree. I mean, what's 
wild, Dave. It's like when we talk to him, we're like, hey, man, man you know, doing great. It's a great year and everything. And he's like looking at you like, I'm not satisfied. I don't like yeah. where we're at. All, everybody in Georgia is feeling really good about it. But that's like when I said he knows what it looks like. And right now it's not near where he wants it to be. But he's a guy that can get it there. Well, picking up a guy like the man with the ball, Hill. Nice addition, Braylon. They're trying to get him back to where he was a year ago. Last three games seem to be working pretty well for Georgia's post player. Averaging 17 points a game over his last three. It made 19 of 24 shots in the process. Oh, Miller. Just about an inch or two shy of throwing that one down. Excuse me. Nick Pringle, an inch or two shy of throwing that one down. And Georgia answers on an Oquindo three. 26% from behind the arc for Cario. Well, they got to have him today. He's got to be really good at both ends of the floor for them to be able to stay somewhat close. Welch. It's just so hard. We sit here and we nitpick the pick and roll, and we nitpick this and this. But when you got shooters out there, and you got them in the corner, and they're spacing the floor, you have to make some tough decisions. And sometimes you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Right now, Georgia's damned if they do. Oh, Quindo with a drive to the basket, offensive foul. And again, you can see the spacing. It's very good that time. And, and, the, and the penetration, they got to knock down those shots. But again, you're having to run at shooters. You're having to help on penetration. Doesn't get any tougher defensively. Pringle takes a seat. Nice run there for Pringle. Six points on three of five. A couple of rebounds. This is something that Mike White said that Mississippi State was able to do a little bit. A slow Alabama down. A little different kind of three-quarter pressure, half-court pressures. Bediaco boxing out. Hanselm allowing his teammate to come up with a rebound. Now they throw it away. Oquindo. Oh, he's right there. Take the shot. Gives it up to Holt. I don't think Oquindo realized he was wide open <laughs> six feet from the basket. I mean, that'd be one thing if that was Miller, but Holt struggled for the three-point line. He's got to shoot that ball. Another three. Ryland Griffin, 34% from behind the arc. That is number eight for the Tide here in the first half. I'd say they got the message, wouldn't you, Dave? I mean, if he said it once, he said it five times. You better have your mind right. Yep. Speaking of Nate Oates, as he talked to his team today, Here's Holt in the lane. Nice drive by Juice. Coming back to Tuscaloosa where he spent last season. Can you find a way to get three stops in a row? I don't know. But that's what they got to try to do from here on out is try to get three stops in a row periodically and see if they can creep back into this thing. Burnett misses the three. That'll be a foul on Dom Welch. And Nate Oates, I mean, really there's a couple of things he talked to us about moving down the road. Like what an area or two that you really have to make sure that you're efficient in to go where you want to go. And he, two things popped up immediately. Can't turn the ball over. And we got to continue to rebound at the high level that we are, and maybe even a little bit more on the offensive end. Absolutely, because those are things that give you extra opportunities for your offense. If you get the rebounds and keep the other team from getting the rebound, offensive rebound, and then turn the little things. Man, he was just uh, he was the epitome of a team player. He was a three-level everything on offense and defense. I mean, he could guard big, small, do it all. Speaking of do it all, how about that from Brandon Miller? Hanging in the air and getting it through the cylinder. Miller now up to 16. 
We talked about the length, and that's why you're seeing these lobs over the top. Look like Georgia was right there, but Alabama just too long, too athletic. Better double teamed underneath. Anselm, that won't go. Back the other way with Bradley. Clowney got it. Clowney burying the three. That's his 23rd of the year. Again, this, what do you do defensively? The floor is so spaced, the shooters everywhere. The guards are left on an island to defend the ball against good, strong ball handlers that can get in the lane. It's a nightmare. Just taken away. Clowney starts the break the other way, gets it to Sears, who finds Miller. Ediaka with a screen. Miller just fires away for three. No good. Roberts the long rebound. Boy, that looked good, too. <laughs> that was right on line. Roberts step back for three. Too strong. Rebound to Clowney. Alabama's made nine threes. That's the total they had against Tennessee. The other total is they made 17 shots total against Tennessee. They've made 17 shots today here in the first half with six minutes to go before halftime. 14 minutes. Made 17 in 40 minutes. They've made 17 in 14 minutes today. When you're making them like that, and pinpoint pass to see athleticism being able to finish that Bama hasn't missed back-to-back -back shots tonight Miller with 16 Sears with a dozen seven players have already scored for the tide meanwhile George is led by the six points from Braylon Bridges but he's Saddled with two fouls. Etter takes a charge. She's done that the last couple of years for Georgia. Yeah, he's a guy that's going to get in there. He's going to stick his chest in there and take the hit. It's just a great read. And I think that's what Georgia's going to have to start doing is that they just got to try to stop this penetration to where it's so deep. Because once it goes another step further, it's at the point of no return as far as lobs and kicking out. Netter, Durbrahim, he can really shoot the basketball. That one's off the mark. Boy, he's, Abdul Rahim has got just a really nice jump shot. Effortless. Yeah. I mean, it just comes off his hand. Just, it's like your sand wedge. It's like butter. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say it was like my shot from the high <laughs> It's like your sandwich yeah, from 80 yeah. out. How it just comes in there like butterfly, <laughs> butterfly with sore feet. Yeah. Just comes down there. I appreciate it, Joe, but I have loosened many a backboard <laughs> in the SEC over the years when I shoot early in the day. The maintenance doesn't like to see me coming. Shot clock horn sounds. Here's a run out by the tie. Bradley kicks it. Sears rips the net. Again, best team by far in the country off a miss. That they is, get it up the floor. Their tempo is incredible. That's three-pointer number 10 right on their season average. Roberts. Bridges. Fouled from behind. And again, ball is missed and they are off. And the thing is, is that everybody on the floor can push it. And they got a shooter running the spots, willing passers, good passers. They don't, you think, you think, with the way they're able to score, you think that they're trapping and turning you over. They really don't turn teams over at an alarming pace, but they're two-point percentage defense the three-point percentage defense is some of the best in the country they're just so solid and so long and challenging shots and then we talked about great rebounding team they're off to the races hey tomorrow night 7 30 eastern we'll have a 
Three and a half hour recap of this week's SEC Men's and Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. The Florida Gators have won the last 10 men's titles, and the Tennessee Lady Vols are the women's defending champs. It's all coming your way Sunday, 7.30 Eastern Time. Georgia's hit six of eight at the line, but just one of six from behind the arc. They're shooting 29% overall. Not surprising, Alabama defends the three really well. Matter of fact, they're second in the country. Opponents just hit 26% from behind the arc against the Tide this year. Shot clock at five. Sears. In and out. Tapped around right to Roberts. Miller defending him. Bridges with a screen. Back to Bridges. It'll belong to Georgia with 19 on the shot clock. Alabama. Can I take away from that? As I look at all those teams, I don't see a team where I go, you know, they're, they're a shooter. I think it's it's a wide open, and I think the other five teams or so that get in from the SEC are capable of beating anybody we just saw on that list. Alabama has 13 quad one slash quad two victories, and... Certainly, uh, that stands out amongst many items on their resume. And you see where the other teams are. Mississippi State and Kentucky hanging on, but Kentucky should elevate a little bit after the win today. We'll see Arkansas with a win today as well. Missouri and A&M going at it as we speak. Here's Roberts back the other way. Tried to go with the reverse, didn't work. Bridges there playing with those two fouls, had it knocked out of his hands. Georgia was 17, make it 16 on the shot clock. Abdul Rahim fires away, misses left again. The rebound into the hands of Noah Gurley. Clowney. Back to Burnett. They're going to call a charge against Alabama's Noah Clowney. you got to love how Etter plays. I mean, certainly undersized against Clowney. Certainly not near the athlete, but fighting him tooth and nail. Knows he's going to drive right. Sticks his chest right in there. Georgia just won for their last 11. And a foul against Clowney as he reaches around Bridges. Well, these have been really good each week. And our next one Monday night, SEC Inside grants you an all-access pass to the Ole Miss women's basketball team, team at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, then go all-access with the Mississippi State men's program. You'll get never-before-seen footage and sound from players and coaches. It truly is a behind-the-scenes look right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Burnett. That won't go, and... Well, that call beat Patrick Evans will give way to Chuck Jones, and that foul will go on Quindo. Yeah, Cario O'Quindo will pick up the foul. Again, it's a long rebound, a high rebound. Now, yeah. let me ask you this. Now, how is that a foul on yeah, Quindo? I, I don't have yeah. any idea how you could say that's a foul on him. That at worst is a no call or a foul on Alabama. I like the no call. <laughs> it's like, what am I yeah. supposed to do? Miller had it knocked out of his hands. Roberts there. They're going to count the basket. Did the ball hit the backboard? Uh, I think maybe that's what Chuck Jones, it may have. That looked like it was, it was going up. It looked like he blocked it into the yeah. glass to me. Well, Georgia needed the basket.
Burnett answers right back. A little scoop shot. Just so tough. They're trying to trap. They're trying to get a half-court trap. They throw it over the top, and these guards are just so strong and powerful getting into the lane and finishing. Twenty-two rebounds for Alabama. They are plus eight over Georgia in that department. Pringle. Joe, let's revisit that goaltending. Let's see if it touches the glass. Oh, it looks like he lost it on the way up. Right there, got a little block. And it was blocked. Boom. Yeah, and then it hit. It, it was deflected, and then it looked like it hit the bottom of the backboard. That's what he's saying, that it was blocked off the backboard. Yeah. So. Georgia may have caught a break there. Yep. First one. <laughs> yeah. Here's Pringle at the free throw line. Nick just 51 percent at the line. Misses and the rebound to Moncrief. Georgia shooting 27 percent, 12 percent from behind the arc. It's just a smothering. They, they, their offense and their tempo gets so much attention. But man, they defend. Moncrief. Gurley with a foul in the paint. Oh, I don't I didn't see that one either. I thought that I thought he defended that pretty good. Uh, he got him the first time. Yeah. The first little pump right, fake. Right here. That's, yeah. That, that's a good call. He called it. He's, I was wrong, Dave. Whoa, somebody marked that <laughs> back there. <laughs> Send that to his wife. We just talked about the first time for everything. I'll Alabama. admit it. Well, Alabama gets back so quickly. Miller hangs in the air, lays it up and in. How do you prepare for that? How do you, how do you try to practice that? I mean, there's no way you can prepare for that. And then when you see it, I mean, they just they just come at you. Gurley with the foul there for Alabama. Here comes six nine. <laughs> coming down here, coming downhill at you. I mean, it's just you got to worry. He's just made three or four threes. You don't want to get him that, so you run at. I mean, it's pick your poison. Either give that up or let him set it, set his feet and shoot a three. Double bonus. That was the 10th team, tenth team foul on Alabama. So two shots for Moncrief. Moncrief on the year. Averaging six and a half points since 57% at the line. 30 seconds to go here in the first half. Boy, a worst-case scenario for Georgia. Alabama comes out and hits their first three threes in, like, the first 90 seconds, and they've never looked back. They've knocked down 10 threes here in the first half. Five on the shot clock. Bradley throws it up, draws some contact, got popped in the forehead in the process, but he will head to the free-throw line. This is textbook analytics when you hear people talk about analytic basketball a lot of it is layups or three-point shots or free throws and i cannot think of one mid-range anything that alabama's taken today everything is a three free throw line free throws or at the rim for a layup or at a dunk for a dunk i mean it's textbook new era basketball i mean nobody does it better than me so Bradley coming off back-to-back -back games with double-figure points at 12 against Auburn, 14 against Tennessee. The prior six games averaged just four and a half points per game and wasn't really shooting it very well. 
He's part of this offense that's top 15 in the country in offensive efficiency and top five in the country in defensive efficiency. Just hard to find a weakness. The one weakness, which has happened a few times this year, is just holding on to the basketball. A lot of it is, you talk to Coach Oates, it's self-inflicted. It's mental lapses. Not really, you know, Tennessee would beg to differ, but not something that's being done to them. It's their lack of execution, their lack of being there mentally. They're going to count the basket for Georgia. So Hill gets the late two-pointer, but still 20 made baskets. Those two young men, seven of the ten three-pointers for the Crimson Tide. Alabama held Georgia to 30%. Georgia just one of eight on their three-point tries. Here's Sears. Kick it to Clowney. They start the second half much like they started the first half. And they want to push that ball screen down. But these guards are just getting direct line drives and getting in there, and they're just too strong. And they're, when you start drawing help, and you got shooters, you got problems. Here's Hill. That one's blocked by Bediaco. Starts the surge the other way. Bradley. Miller can't get it to go. Clowney is there. Just so long at every position. I mean, you and I were talking about it, just watching him and shoot around. And you see it on TV, but TV doesn't do it justice. And the, the length, and Coach White talked about it from a roster standpoint. It, it's one of the better rosters that he's ever seen. Well, Mike White said a couple of things. We can't turn it over, and we have to really rebound the ball like we have it all year, and that just hasn't happened. Alabama's out-rebounded Georgia by 10 here. As we are just a minute and a half into the second half. Great. Braylon Bridges spins and loses it out of bounds. He was the one area where we thought maybe coming in, Dave, that he could present a problem if they could get it to him consistently and if he could go to work. But again, the, it's a monumental task with the length and the depth of Alabama. Betty Yako. I mean, how do you guard him? I mean, you just, they throw over the top, they shoot over the top, they lob it, they drive it. It's just hard for me to sit here and watch this as they have 61 points and think that they got 59 in a game against Tennessee. I mean, that's a credit to Tennessee. But if you just told me that and I didn't see it, I'd find that hard to believe. Roberts, Betty Yako all over him. Will step back by Terry Roberts. And if you're Georgia, you just got to keep playing. I mean, you just got to get out there and compete. Try to get better. A little bit short. Tapped around, but Bediaco keeps it alive. Here's Sears, baseline. Back to Bediaco. He'll try it from three. Air ball. Bridges with the basketball. <laughs> Bediaco. On the year, so it's four. now 0 for 6. 0 for 6. He was feeling like he was due, Dave. I mean, why not? Yeah. Everybody else making him. <laughs> Boy, a big screen by Bridges on Sears. Roberts tied up. Another tough shot. There's Miller with the rebound. Brandon with three of those and those 18 points. And a trip. Kind of get by the length of Bediaco. Then you run into the length of Clowney. And then you got 
Miller. And it looked like Roberts was going to have a shot there. Going to have a little attempt at the rim, and then it just goes dark. Boy, in a game when it's 61-27, Nate Oates doesn't waste any time. He saw his star player kind of limp a little bit like he got tweaked immediately. Goes to the bench, brings in Welch, who slices past Oquindo. That didn't take long for Dom to get on the board in the second half. He'll head to the free throw line, and Alabama now with 17 assists tonight. Just five turnovers. Yeah, just falling asleep on the backside, letting the guy back cut you. Not getting towards the ball, not seeing the ball, not seeing your man. Next thing you know, it's too late. So Welch playing in his 13th game of the year for Alabama. Converts the three-point opportunity. And six of eight at the line on the year. Better to the bench. Hill on the floor for Georgia. UGA's lone win last year in conference play. Their only win was against Alabama. I got a feeling Nate Oates might have brought that up at some point this week. There might have been a little video on that. Sears, that's a deep three off the front of the rim. There's Betty Ako again. Takes it himself, and he's fouled by Holt. And Charles Betty Ako will head to go to the final four after losing Dominique. And I came out of the high school the same year as James Banks and played in the McDonald's game with him. Terrific player. Played on the Olympic team with Vern Fleming, another outstanding just George incredible player. Yeah. player. I mean, just it's no secret. Wasn't a fluke. They, 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 had some, they had some ballers now. How about Betty Ako stepping to the line? He has really struggled at the free throw line this year. Looks quite calm at the line. Making both of those. He came in just a 33% foul shooter on the year. 12 of 36. Nice job by Moncrief. Got way underneath the basket, able to like the strength of Hill, being able to get in there and get low and keep his dribble. No help coming from Alabama, so he just sized him up, made a terrific feed. Boy, Welch earning some minutes. Good effort there on the offensive glass. Can you kind of get him to shoot the shot? He would like a, a deep three off of one pass, probably not the shot they want. And it's cleaned up. Moncrief spins. Left hand short. Tapped around a couple of times. Here's Welch again. Roberts saved it right back to Dom and intercepted there by Holt. Holt on Quinterly. The ex-teammates and this time Juice Holt wins the battle. Good read by Holt. Good poise in the open floor. It'll stay with Alabama. You like get good rotation, good hands. Probably not the best pass. But again, the little Euro. Up and under, nice play. Burnett had it, lost it, got it back. Give him the basket. Just everybody who comes in, the physicality of them, the strength, just to be able to give, give the blow instead of receiving the blow when they go to the rim, it's very impressive. Hill. Can't get it to go. Devon Quinterly in the corner. 
Burnett taps it to Clowney and fouled there by Anselm. Free throws coming up. Well, we talk about how good Alabama is, and you just wonder on the other side, like what's going through Mike White's mind? And how do you try to just salvage yeah. something out of this? Just try to get something positive so that, that what you don't want to do, Dave, is come out of this game, and, it, and this is a loss, and it turns into two, three. You got to find a way to try to get something positive going here in the second half, whatever it may be. And then try to wash this one away. Probably not even watch the film. Start getting ready for your next one. But boy, that's a that's a that's a helpless feeling. I mean, it because you're throwing the kitchen sink at this team, personnel wise and then scheme wise. And at the end of the day, you just don't have enough athletes, enough length, enough shooting. Cloudy to the bench. Wonder if we're done with. I would be surprised if we see some of these starters back on the floor. Brandon Miller left a moment ago. He has 18 points. Loose basketball, and it'll stay with Georgia. Maybe a game to get Javon Quinterly going. I mean, yeah. give him a yeah. few opportunities. He's kind of been that that in that space where you're not quite sure where he's going. Yeah, he came back, you know, just his rehab was incredible from the knee. Came back earlier than anybody expected. Just as healthy as can be. A lot of it, I think, is getting comfortable between the ears. And again, I think you know, trying not to do too much. I think he, the way he gets in trouble with his turnovers and his penetration and things is when he tries to do too much. Like right there, great extra pass. Just made made the play that was presented to him. It's a deep three by Burnett. Georgia corrals the rebound. Boy, if they could get Quinterly going, you know, before, you know, he was averaging 13 and a half points a game last year over four assists. 12th in the conference and scoring 8th in assists as Georgia rattles the rim as it still shakes after the Ansel and two-pointer. But if they can get him oh. another weapon, not that they need any more than they have, but certainly you can take all you can to the tournament. Well, you can see right here, you spread the floor, and he's a guy that can get in there. I mean, he showed it last year, showed it that he can get in there and make plays. He can beat you off the bounce. And again... It's a spacing nightmare defensively. I mean, when you're locked up one-on-one -on -one with a guy like Quinterly and guys got to stay at home on shooters, it's not where you want to be. Oquindo, nice take to the basket, and he'll head to the free throw line. This Alabama team is just so, so talented. Matter of fact, one of the numbers that jumped out at me they have won 10 SEC games by double digits. This will be number 11. They, I'm making a bold statement, assuming they're going to win this by double digits, I know. <laughs> but Easy now. they would tie the school record for that particular stat, winning SEC games by double figures, would be their 11th. They would actually match the 1956 team that also won 11 games by double digits. I played against them. <laughs> you might have. <laughs> Here's Quinterly. Pringle. Again, they just downhill, 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 downhill. Defensively, if you can't stay and contain and stay in front of the dribbler and keep it out of the lane, you have no shot. Nobody has a shot against these guys. How about Quinterly now up to six assists in this game? And they t said that he wanted him to show that he could handle the ball. He's coming off six turnovers versus Tennessee. I think he got the message. Roberts with a nice basket for the dogs. Terry Roberts off the bench with 10, four rebounds, a couple assists for Terry. And he comes away with the steal. Two on one. Hill takes it himself, and they're going to call a blocking foul. That's going to go against Ryan Griffin. And a three-point opportunity. Just made, I think, the thing that... When you look at guys like that, 
the guys that played with him were better players because yeah. of his ability to get them open shots to cover for them defensively that's when you know you have a great player is that the guys around him flourish because of their presence jones averaging almost 10 points a game almost four rebounds as alabama throws one down again nick pringle with that basket pringle now up to 10. he is the third crimson tide player in double figures the man right here with the ball roberts with 10 that gives it to bridges who goes with the left hand and Braylon, he's now in double figures with 10. Hill and Roberts have been doing a pretty good job of getting some deep penetration. Bridges has really benefited from it here in the second half. Sears step back a little bit short, long rebound, another opportunity. Griffin swings it to the corner as Miller checks back in. And what does he do? Promptly buries another three. It's a great extra pass, had a good shot. Gave it up for a better one. Up to 21 now for Brandon Miller, the SEC's leading scorer. Came in averaging 18.7 a game. Oquindo. That won't go. Here's Miller again. Well, this is his 10th 20-plus point game of the season for Brandon Miller. Here's Sears. He'll swing it around the perimeter to Griffin. Boy, Dave, you, you look at him and you're going a freshman. And I mean, probably most of your freshmen who have been logging a lot of minutes in the SEC aren't truly freshmen anymore. But when you just, when you think about him being a, a true freshman and, and how he plays, it's pretty special. 17 now for Sears. Here's McBride. Quindo catch and shoot. He knocks home the three over the outstretched hands of Noah Gurley. Those are things that you hope that George is somebody like Quindo who struggled from the three. Maybe he can get some a little bit of confidence going for games coming up. Substitutions abound on our next whistle. There will be a timeout taken by Georgia. Brandon Miller leading Alabama with 21. Brandon Miller talked about that game was just again you know we talked about what a good person he is and i mean it just he was so excited to be there and so uh looking forward to it and you know that his presence there was such a lift for those individuals just great to see things like that yeah good on the alabama basketball team to go out there and support those guys he'll step back knocks home the three there for georgia i think if you're georgia at this stage you're, you gotta go like look man you're not going to guard. You're not going to play. I mean, a little late in the game. <laughs> but again, finish the game. Finish, you know, play with some pride. Play with some fight. You know, quit giving up layups and, and, and point-blank shots. Shut, have a little resistance. Moncrief grabbing the Pringle jersey a minute ago. Whistled for that foul. Here's Burnett working on Etter. We're going to call an offensive foul. Burnett and Etter going at it on that drive, and Etter with his third charge drawn tonight. Yeah, I don't like that one. I mean, he, again, I, I appreciate the, the effort and the willingness to take a charge when you're 38 down, but uh, he threw his chest in the ring on that one. Moncrief fouled by Pringle. Well, the Crimson Tide leading it by 38. Give us a chance to mention our basketball doubleheader on Wednesday night right here on the SEC Network. Vandy and Baton Rouge squaring off against LSU. Trying to avoid a 15-game skid. That's 7 o'clock Eastern. And then Joe Lenardi has Auburn listed as an 8 seed. They host Ole Miss at 9 Eastern time. 8 Central. It's all right here on the SEC Network. And you can always find it on the ESPN app. 
And when you were over in baseball today, did you throw a little BP? Did you get out there and give them the old knuckle curve? Or no, the maintenance guys were afraid I was going to break something like that <laughs> when I walk into Coleman Coliseum. <laughs> they don't let me touch the equipment. Here's Edder. Seven forty-seven to go in this one, Alabama. Yeah, I mean it, it's you got M M Mizzou playing Mississippi State on Tuesday. I'm going to be fortunate enough to see that game. I mean, there's there's some big time opportunities and some big time chances to really lay an egg in these next four games. I mean, got some really good matchups, games that are going to have a big say in what goes on for the seating in the SEC tournament. Edder gets the free throw to go down. Boy, Alabama. Ten offensive rebounds have resulted in 17 second chance points. Burnett gets that to go. They are plus 21 in the rebound department. Alabama over Georgia. Plus 21. I mean, and again, you're, you come down, it's one pass in the layup. Negative 21, I mean, just. On the year, Alabama's plus six in rebound yeah. margin. And Coach White just is like, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Von Creef, offensive foul. We've all had those days. If you play long enough, you're, you're going to get some. <laughs> now, do you remember, and I'm not talking NBA because you play so many games, but do you remember the worst beatdown you took as a college player, whether it was a freshman year at Notre Dame or when you got to Arkansas? I think the first time that I played in Hawfines Arena against Phi Sigma Jamma as a sophomore, we, we had played a really light schedule. You were to Arkansas then. At time. Arkansas, yeah. and we had played a light schedule, so we I think we were four in the country, but we hadn't really played anybody, and they they were who they were, and <laughs> they stuck it to you. Put it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we ended up losing by 17 or something, but it wasn't that close. Yeah, that that team was pretty good. Yeah, they man, Drexler, McKean, yeah, they, you know, Michelle, Michael Young, yeah, Benny Andrews. I mean, <laughs> Still don't know how they didn't win a national championship. Here's Holt. Better. Boy, Alabama just gets out to the perimeter so quickly on these passes. They just cover. They just cover, they smother the shooter, and then if the, sh the guy drives, they cover him, and then their rotation, they just spot on defensively. Quinterly got it. That's the Javon Quinterly we remember. And that's the one they're looking for, because they're going to need him down the stretch in the tournament to move forward and to go where they want to go. He's a talent now. Oh, scramble. That foul on Burnett said he grabbed him by the leg, I think was the comment. Let's see. Robertson, Burnett going at it. Oh, he did. He pulled his leg out. Good call. That's the second time. I never touched him. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> Tate, what they say? Tate don't lie. Well, Patrick Evans twice has kind of seen got, something we didn't initially see. That's a young fella. <laughs> Griffin. Pringle, nice pass to a putting Griffin. To a cutting Griffin, and he'll head to the free throw line. Got your mind on something yeah. like that. <laughs> putting. <laughs> I wonder how Tiger Woods is doing today. <laughs> he made the cut out yeah, of L.A. Yeah. Good for him. Yep. Griffin off the back of the iron. Time now for our Mayhem Moment brought to you by Allstate. 
And, well, there's a bunch to choose from, but this one was pretty impressive to Pringle. Yeah, I mean, again, you get in that middle ball screen, and it Bridges helps up the floor, which is a cardinal sin for any big. You gotta gotta make the guy come to you because if you do, that's what you're gonna get. It's probably the easiest play in basketball when a big helps up the floor on a guard. You're gonna leave it for an easy dump or a lob for a dunk. 23 assists, a season high for Alabama. They've only turned it over. Nine times. Georgia's did a nice job. They've only coughed it up six times. But they're shooting 39%. Nine of 20 from the free throw line, though, for Georgia. Again, that's what Nate talked to us about, is that they're not high on the oh. low. Pringle misses what have, would have been Jump one of the th best highlights of the year for Alabama. We'd have to redo the mayhem moment. <laughs> The double mayhem moments on that one. Blocks it, taps it to his teammate, Rylan Griffin. Just so many players. Just so many players. Bringle, the junior transfer from Wofford. I mean, he cocks this thing back. He was, he was trying to hurt this backboard and just missed it. Oh, look at his look. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> he had that first look like, oh, this is going to yeah. be incredible. And then it was like, oh, no. Center top ten. <laughs> and then it was, oh, no. <laughs> Alabama at the free throw line, 13 of 19. Dual Rahim can't get it to go. That's his third miss from behind the arc. It'll stay with Georgia. Moving forward, they really got to have him and McBride make shots for them. Something that hasn't happened today because, as you can see, the spacing on the floor when they don't make shots makes it very difficult for Hill and Roberts and Quindo to get to the basket. They need guys that can give them some spacing. Adam Cottrell coming in the game and crowd favorite, obviously. The ovation for him as he got up out of that bench and hustled to the scorer's table. He looks at the clock and he's got, I got 437 to get some shots up. Man, I might get up double figure shots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see him passing. Get in now, young fella, get him up. Here's Griffin. Ryland. Pringle didn't miss that dunk. When you put the shooters in the corner and a guy at the it's, you know, it's basic dribble drive. I mean, they get downhill, you got a dump. Guys in the corner to shoot. Running it to perfection. Another rebound for Pringle. He's now up to 11. 14 and 11 today for Nick Pringle. Boy, Dave, this is where. Oh, Pringle's having a day. Despite the missed dunk. This is where, as a coach, well, I think that it's just a tribute to the coaching staff. You know, they have a way they're going to do things. They hold guys accountable, and he's come in, and he's embraced that. He's accepted it. He's a tremendous, tremendous player. Again, maybe the best one in the country, but he's humble. He shows up, he works every day, he makes his teammates better. I mean, this is why they're number one. Alabama reached the 100-point mark for the fifth time this season. Their season high was 106 against LSU. They beat LSU 106-66. They beat Vanderbilt 101-44. And they beat Jacksonville State 104-62. I think they're going to get it. Cottrell can't get it to go. 
<laughs> Here's Holt. He'll back it out to Roberts. Cottrell guarding him, swatted away by Pringle, but a foul in the process. Boy, Pringle, it's impressive. Again, this is my first time seeing Alabama, but I'm, you hear so much about Clowney and Sears and Quinterly and Miller. You start seeing some of these other guys like Pringle, just physically how they look and then how they play. It's hard for me to... I don't, I don't know how there could be a, a better team in the country than this one. I just... Now, on any given night, anything can happen, as we've seen. But, boy, I would have to I would have to pick them as my favorite. If I had to pick one to win it all, I'd have to pick this one. Bringle, by the way, has tied his career high with 17 points. Also tied his career high with 11 rebounds. Nice corner three from Justin Hill. He's up to 14 points on 5 of 10. Knocked home both of his three-pointers. He continues to play at an extremely high level for Georgia. Here's Griffin. That one won't go. That one does go. Ryland Griffin. 34% three-point shooter on the year. Pringle keeps it alive. Jaden Quinterly gets it back to Pringle, who's putting up a career high. 19 points today. Big fella running the floor. All their bigs can run the floor. Hey, tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern, we'll have a three-and-a-half-hour recap of this week's SEC Men's and Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. The Florida Gators have won the title ten consecutive years. And the Lady Vols, they are your women's defending champs. That is Sunday, 7.30 Eastern time, tomorrow night, right here on the ESPN app and the SEC Network. Winterly looking. He couldn't get it to go. <laughs> M.A. Moncrief fouled. Alabama. After this one, they will get South Carolina on the road in Columbia. On ESPN2, and then this weekend they will host Arkansas, which should be a high scoring affair. Nick Smith Jr., of course, a lot of arguments coming into this season who was the better of the guys, and yeah. in, in that conversation with Brandon Miller. And I'll tell you what, one of the things that's happened with Brandon Miller this year is he's shot up draft boards, and while he was expected to be a, a high pick, some projections have him as the number three guy well there's one dude overseas and I can't say his name but from France who's seven foot four and plays like a guard and even if I could remember it right off my top of my head I, I would butcher it <laughs> but he is he's he's got him lined up but whoever gets Miller is not going to be disappointed in the, in the least with his ability to put it on the floor. He's and his ability to shoot it with that size. I mean, he fits in perfectly with what the NBA wants to do. And getting back to Arkansas, I mean, Nick Smith, they started him today. He played some minutes. They got some good minutes from Jalen Graham. I mean, that's a team that they have to get Nick Smith going. If they're going to do something significant, they're going to, I think they're going to make the tournament. 
I think they'll, you know, be formidable in the SEC. But if they're going to do something significant this year, Nick Smith's got to find his groove over these last four games of the year. Well, that game will be Saturday with Arkansas. And, of course, I guess kind of turn your attention to that March 5th date at Texas A&M. Now, there's three games between now and that one. But that one could decide the SEC regular season champion. And A&M's a team like Mississippi State who... It's given this team trouble. They they defend you. They stay in front of you. They junk it up a little bit. They trap you. They can make it very difficult for you on the offensive end with all the things they can do defensively. And they're they're physical offensively. They go points in the paint. So it's kind of the recipe that when Alabama has struggled and it hasn't been much, it's been turning the ball over, which AM can make you do, and they can pound you in the paint. They're a physical team, so what I'm telling you is there's a chance. <laughs> right. But it, the big thing on that is where it's played. And if it gets to that point, a &M, that place will be off the chain. Alabama has committed 23 fouls today. They've sent Georgia to the free throw line 30 times, but the dogs just 13 of 30. Cottrell from the corner gets the three to go. Adam Cottrell with his second three of the year. And the chance of AC ring from the Coleman Coliseum <laughs> Raptors. Good for him. Those guys, they, they do all the scout team work and all the stuff. And for them to get a chance to play and make a shot in front of 13,000, good for them. You know, Alabama shoots it so well today, and everybody shot it well at shoot-around. Matter of fact, his coach, Nate Oates, said it was one of their best. They have this little drill in five minutes, how many threes can yeah. we get up? They try to get 80. He said they were up over, I think, 96 yeah. today. It was one of their best three-point shooting days. And he goes, I hope that transfers to over. I think it has. They're 16 out of 34. They average 10 makes per game. And that'll do it. Alabama just dominates Georgia from the opening tap. 108.